we all stand. Blessed be God. Luke uh, chapter 2, verse number um, 41. Um, actually, this morning, let's start, let's start from verse number 44. Is that okay? Amen. Let's start from verse number 44 up to verse number um, 52. Yeah, 52. Amen. Amen. Um, can, can I read the first verse and you read the following verse on the NLT in the name of Jesus? Because they assumed that he was among the travelers, uh, but when he did not show up that evening, they started looking for him uh, among their relatives and friends. Can you guys read, read verse number 45 together with a loud voice? Let's go one, two. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days after they finally discovered him the, in the temple, sitting among the religious um, teachers, listening to them and asking questions. Verse number 47. Let's go one, two. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Sam, his mother said to him, Why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. Verse number 49. But why did you need to search? He asked, Did you know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he meant. Verse number 51. Let's go to. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. Somebody say all the people. All the people. Somebody say all the people. All the people. Let's jump to um, Matthew 14, 23 to 25, New King James Version. Matthew 14, 23 to 25, New King James Version. Jesus. And we, we can also read 26 and 27. Amen. Can I read? Amen. Can I read one verse, same way we're doing it. Just want you guys to get involved. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Can you guys read verse 24? But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Verse number 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just read it again on, on the NLT, verse number 25 and 26. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards, towards them, walking on the water. When Jesus, when the, and when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in their fear. They cried out, it's a ghost, verse number 27. But Jesus spoke to them at once, do not be afraid. Shake your neighbor as a neighbor, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Jesus said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Take courage, I am here. Hallelujah. Amen. The last scripture, Luke chapter 15, 17 and 18. NLT. Luke chapter 15. Of your word under this anointing, 
I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, oh God, give me the insight into your word. I open up my mind, oh Father, that, oh God, in the name of the Lord God Almighty, you are the one that thinks through me. You speak through me and speak to your people and speak to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for an undiluted word. We pray for a word of truth that will bring exhortation, that will bring upliftment, that will bring encouragement, that will bring Almighty God rebuke, that will bring change into somebody's life. In your name we pray. And let the church shout and say, Amen. Amen. Come on, shout one more time and say, Amen. Amen. You may take your seat. dangerous journey and uh, uh, number one and very important that we gave is that you need you need to recognize who started the journey hello yeah. if, if you if you miss who started the journey the journey is going to become dangerous for you and and, and and number two in the midst of the journey uh, avoid assumptions on the journey because assumptions have become the mother of all breakups because you assumed and you never had facts about things. And, 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 and the Bible said in the book of Luke that they assumed that he was among them. Hello? Yeah. They, they, they were his parents, Mary and Joseph. They were the parents of Jesus. But they, 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 they had a problem. They assumed that he was among them. The fact that he traveled with you going does not, does not quantify that he's going to travel with you when you're going back. And it's very important that in every journey that you undertake, before you undertake the journey, make sure of his presence. Amen. Hello? Amen. And we also touched on the book of Mark chapter 4, verse number 35 to verse number 38, where Jesus speaks to the disciples and says, let us cross over to the other side. And, and verse number 35 and, 30, and, 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 and 36 articulates that when he said it, some boats also followed. But he did not speak to the other boats. Be careful of following somebody's word, yet he did not speak to you. Because some of us, we get on journeys and we get on trips that God never spoke, but he spoke to my BFF. The fact that we are married does not mean that he speaks to the both of us. Ananias and Sapphira, they both died because God spoke and Ananias said, Lord, let us cheat God. Safira, you, you would have been alive even today if you did not take heed on the word of Ananias. And Jesus says, let us cross over. And the Bible says, other little boats were with them. But when it continues, the Bible says, now the storms began to beat against the boat. And the other boats disappear. We don't know where they disappear. But I've learned to find out that they disappeared because the purpose and the journey was never about them. Yeah. Because the Bible also articulates in the same scripture that Jesus was sleeping at the bank. But it, before it speaks about the sleeping of Jesus, it says the storms begin to beat on the bush. Because storms do not go in the absence of Jesus. Let me say it again. Storms do not go after when Jesus is not there. When you begin to experience attack, my sister, my brother, it's not about you. The attacks are after the content that is on the inside of you. They are not after your outer appearance. They don't care about your makeup. They don't care about your hairstyle. They don't care about the car you drive. They don't care about your accent in English. The attacks, the devil is after your spirit and your soul. God speaks to Samuel when Samuel was about to anoint Eliab instead of David. And he said, Hoka, Hoka, do not anoint him. I have rejected him. For man looks at the outer appearance, but God focuses on the heart. Amen. You must understand, church, when, when the devil attacks you, the devil also is afforded an opportunity to have a foresightness of your future. So when he uh, when he's attacking you in the present, he is not attacking the present. He's attacking the future in the present. Oh, child of God, stop focusing on the attacks that are happening in the present. Lift up or shake your neighbor as a neighbor. Lift up your eyes to the future. And many of us sit in depression. 
we, we, we sit in frustration because of the present moment. And anything that is present is temporal. And listen, the Bible says Jesus was sitting in the boat. Let me tell you something. The storms were not after the disciples. The storms were after Jesus. But it's a dangerous journey when you get, when you start sailing and he's not there. Because yours is to sail and his is to speak to the storms. I'm going to say it again. Yours is to keep on rowing the boat. His job is to speak to the storm. Until the storm begin to beat on the boat, he will continue sleeping. Until the, the boat is it's about to be filled with water, his job has not started. He can still allow you to continue because he does not operate where the storms are not. But <laughs> when the storm begin to rise, that's when he says, I need to rise. Because my operation must always not be equivalent with the storms. But Jesus' operation must always be above the storms. If you start to address the storms, the storms will ask you just like what the Spirit asked the sons of Sceva. Jesus will know. Paul will know. Who are you? That's what you're talking about. The storms will ask you, who created you? And what will be your answer? Come on, talk to me. What will be your answer? Who created you? I talk to me, church. Who created you? God. And I am the storm. Can I tell you something? I'm also created by God. Yes. Which means me and you, we are part of the resource package. Yes. For you to be able to address me, you need to, to be lifted up from being a resource to be the source. But you cannot be the source in the absence of the source. For you to be able to address sickness, you can't address sickness in the same position. You can't address unemployment in the same position. You cannot be in the same position, Baba. That's why it keeps on coming back because it sees you are still in the same position. You are still the same person. You are still the same liar. You are still the same adulterer. The difference between you and the others is just your adultery is holy and it's professional in the church. That's why you will still speak. You will still speak in the storm. As I say, let's leave. It will leave and come back. That's what Isaiah says. When the enemy comes like a flood, the spirit of the Lord must break. <laughs> Until the spirit raises your standard, it has not afforded you a platform to address. <laughs> Shake your name and say, neighbor, I need the spirit to lift up my standard. Some of you women, God must lift up your standard to address that problem. God must lift up your standard to address that situation. God, my own, you need to have a cry. Lift up my standard, oh God. The problem is not the name of Jesus. The problem is where are you mentioning the name of Jesus? The problem is not your condition. The problem is you have a condition in need, but the problem is the position. Okay. How positioned are you to address? Hey, hey. The problem with the church is that we've got Christians that are operating in the shallow waters. They're washing their nets in the shallow waters. And Jesus is saying, if you need to operate, you know, if you want to operate with me, launch out where it is deep. Your standard must be changed so that Jesus can operate in another level. If, if position was not important, he wouldn't have lifted up his name above all names. Position is important in a Christian. How positioned are you? The Bible says he lifted up his name. His name has been what? Exalted. Ex God, God. Don't exalt your
yourself. He must exalt you. And how does he exalt you? He allows the storm to come. The problem is that when you forget that every problem has got two sides. It's got a darker side and a brighter side. You choose which side do you want to exaggerate. And, and the reason why you're still the same level is because every problem that comes to you, you always want to stand on the darker side. But God said, I must remind you of Romans 8, 28. All things, not what you like only, but all things. Actually, Heather, I don't operate in accordance with how you operate. I use all things because I created them. They might not be good to you, but I created them. You might not like them, but I created them. They might be changed to you, but I created them. He's a God of all things. Whether you like them or not like them, but he's still a God of all things. And he's gonna use all. It's another thing for God to use all things, and another thing for you to be ready for all things. Some of you, you were cheated. Let me tell you. Check your neighbor's neighbor. They cheated you. I will tell them and say, neighbor, they cheated you. The pastor is about to tell you the truth. They said, become a Christian. And everything will be easy. They were lying to you. Let me tell you today. They were lying to you. The moment you become a Christian, way, you have come out of the frying pan into the fire. You are a number one suspect in the kingdom of darkness. The devil has put you in number one list. Every day he's after you. When he does not win on Tuesday, on Wednesday he's coming back. When he does not win on Wednesday, on Thursday he's coming back. Child of God, hold your position and say, this is my position. I have been given dominion. I have been given power. I have been given power to travel up on snakes and scorpions. And the world told me no harm. I have been given a, a faith as little as a master seed. I can speak to the mountain and say, mountain! to the sea, and the mountain shall not listen to my voice, but the mountain must see the quantity of my faith, and the mountain will respect the quantity of my faith, the quantity of my faith, and the mountain will begin to move. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, shut up. Hey. You're waiting for God to give you a big faith. How can he trust you with the big faith when you can use the small faith? Oh, Jesus. It is not about the size of your faith. It's about how positioned are you with the small faith. That's why, when you... God, I need to finish. That's why, when you... After you quiet the storms, the same people that he appointed. They say, who is this man? Okay. Stop celebrating too much of the appointment yeah. without the knowledge of who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The fact that he appointed you does not mean that you know him. There are people that are appointed but they don't have the revelation. He said to the disciples, who do you say I am? Yeah. You've been working with me for years, but who do you, can we talk? Who, who do you say I am? Yeah. No. You're an eye opener. You open the eyes of the blind. The fact with you is that your knowledge about me is based on an event, not based on a relationship. You know me about events. You don't have a quality relationship. That's why when I don't perform the events, even the relationship is not on void. Have you ever had a girlfriend who deals with you in accordance with how much money you have? If you can't afford McDonald's, it's over. If you can't take me away, it's over. Oh, don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. You've been there. I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. I've done it. Hello. Every 
every time you see them, they are what's up? Can I have a time? When you say no, don't talk to me. Can I have data? Can I have this? 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 Every Sunday when you come to Jesus, can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? Jesus is asking, when will you come? I need to load more of you in my life. Lord, manifest yourself in my life. I hear the Lord say, I've been doing and doing and doing and doing. What are you doing? I've quieted the storm. You still don't know me. I fed the 5,000. You still don't know me. I opened the blind eyes. You still don't know me. If there's no people that stand up out of, out of the wheelchair, ah, there's no God in this Ooh, church. You got a problem? Because your God is, is in miracles. Don't you know that miracles are not meant for the church people? Mm-hmm. Miracles are meant for heathens. Yes. For the outsiders, so that when they are performed in the church, people can believe. Yes. That's why in the upper room when the disciples were meeting, no miracle happened, but prayer happened, and the Holy Spirit came like a mighty. Hey! It's not about the miracle, it's about the Spirit of the Lord. Come in! Church does not need miracles. Church needs the presence of the Spirit. You want to know God by miracles? Why did you become a Christian? It's because you heard about his miracles. He opened, he, he opened the Red Sea. Miracle. Brought up water out of the stove. Miracle. Provided manna. Miracle. Shook them the prison doors when Paul and Silas were in the prison. Miracle. And God said, should I change you to be a white person? Then you can believe. But some of you, you are celebrating too much of the appointment. Yeah. I appointed you. I said I will make you fishers of men. But even today, you still don't know me. You are in a dangerous state, my sister. I want to ask you, please don't answer me. How well do you know God? And how well does He know you? Yeah. 
But if you don't know, they are moving to the back, they are going to the bathroom because we are on autopilot. Okay. Okay. Let me bring you to the word. Some of you, when you started, I will hold on to the cross. I will set God no matter what. I will move with speed. I will audit. I will be there for you. I will stand for this church. I am a daughter that made them. You are moving so fast. Why? Stop and retrace your steps. I want to give you that. 
for the next few minutes and I close it. Now, listen. Verse number 44 of Luke, chapter 2, verse 41. The Bible says, because they assumed that he was among them, he was among the shepherds, but they did not show, he did not show up that evening. They started looking for him among their relatives and friends. Hello? And last week we spoke about looking, the difference between looking and discovering. If you read the same scripture, then they discovered him. Because you only look for something you know, but you discover something that you don't know. Now watch this. And the Bible says, verse number 45, when they could not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him. Hello? Share your name as a neighbor. There is a need for you to go back. The church of today has categorized going back as a sign of failure. The church of today has categorized going back and has made you to feel that you are not worthy anymore. But let me tell you something. Not every going back is a backsliding. When you are on the journey and you don't have the surety that he is with you, and you are not sure, please do not continue in pretense like he's there when he's not there. Don't, please. That's why Paul says, what shall it profit a man to gain the, whole, the fame of the whole world? And loses one. you are famous indeed. You speak in tongues even more than the pastor. You can see things more than the pastor. But please, 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 if he is not there, please, before you become true to the church, become true to yourself. There is a need for you to have self-introspection and find out, I am playing the keyboard. I, 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 I am singing in the worship. I am an usher. I am, an, I, 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 I am a head of department. But I am a head of department minus Jesus. He is not in my life. He is not present in my life. And there is a need. If he is not present in your life, you left him somewhere. And where you left him, he is still waiting for you right there. And it's upon you to take a decision. I need to go back. I need to take a journey. Because it's not every stopping that is a sign of failure. It's not every stopping that is a sign of foolishness. But let me tell you something. Some stopping shows the presence of wisdom. How do you proceed on a journey to go to KZN while the petrol gauge is telling you that only two uh, uh, 20 kilometers left and the board tells you you still have about 400 kilometers to go but because of the value of your car you still want to continue driving let me give you the truth whether it's a Maserati, a Range Rover, a BMW a, a Mercedes Benz it will stop but let me tell you something when it stops, it does not lose its value. No. When it stops, it does not lose its beauty. No. Yeah. It's stopping because there's no petrol. Yeah. You've been praying for a long time, but you're praying to somebody who's not there. Yeah. Mary, Joseph, you gave birth to him, but he's not there. Yeah. And the problem, the Bible says, you, you are looking for him in the wrong places. Yeah. You are looking for him among relatives. You are looking for him among friends. And uh, you left him in Jerusalem. I know you are among relatives. You are among friends. But please do not move in accordance with the majority. Just because the majority are voting does not mean that it's a right decision. And the problem with you is that whether you can take a personal decision, all your decisions in your life are taken about majority rules. There is, there's even a WhatsApp group about you. Because even this morning, what you're wearing, somebody said yes. Your makeup, somebody said yes. The hair, you changed it three times because said no, it doesn't do this. Outdoor. Why will you make your own decisions that are good for you, that are good for your spirit, that are good for your inner man? Young people in the city. We move with the masses. But let me tell you something. All champions don't move with the masses. They always take the road that is less walked by others. The precious Mutipa of this world. The Sri Ramaphosas of this world. The Obamas of this world. They always want to do that what has not been done by people. And your name will never be recorded in history until you decide to stop. And say, you know what? Our things are not the same. Let me ask you a question. Who are you fooling? Amen. 
Don't continue the journey until you find him. The Bible says, they started looking among friends and relatives. You know why you're looking among friends and relatives? Because the presence of Jesus in your life, hear me, the presence of Jesus in your life is always quantified by people that hang around you. Not quantified by your relationship with him. He plays for the pastor when the pastor is preaching. And because you walk with him, you say, Ben, I'm Holy Ghost filled. But you never checked whether is he playing out of the presence or out of skill. And yet, you don't have the skill. So if if he stops playing, even your life becomes quiet. It's just noise. Guys, you just disturb my microphone. Everything stops. Even the mic stops. He stopped playing. Because your connection with him, with God, is always dependent on whether he plays. So which means he has become the referee of your life. He decides when you pray. He decides when you worship. And the question is, can you still worship when the music has stopped? Can you still pray when there's no background music? Can you still serve God when there's no music? When will your Jesus become yours, not, not the church Jesus? When will Jesus speak and say, I have found Ruhanga name. There is no one like him in all the earth. And Jesus has a personal testimony and a personal report about you. <laughs> and just because I'm a Calvarian, in our church we worship. No. No. Can we not talk about our church we worship? No. Can we talk about in my room I worship? Yeah. But you will never arrive at such levels until you stop. Well, you can never count the spokes of a bicycle wheel while it's still turning. You don't know what you have and what you don't have because when you keep on turning all the time. Can you stop and just take stock? If you go, continue. Because my preaching is dependent on your plan. <laughs> Lastly, watch this, guys. If you go to Mr. Price, I'll give you an example of Mr. Price because some of us can afford that. Yeah. If you go to Mr. Price, on month end, there are times when you arrive there and the shop is closed. And they say, busy with stock taking. Because the profit of the business is dependent on how much stock we have. So for us to say we are doing well, we must check the stock that came in, check the stock that went out, quantify it with the stock that has remained, and say we have made a profit or we have made losses. That's, that's in the shop. Hello? We can't do that when you are shopping. Because only employees are needed when we are doing stock taking. Not customers. The, the problem with you is that you have not the people that are around you, you have not distinguished which ones are employees and which ones are customers. Everybody is always around them. That's why your life never goes for stock taking. Because yours having an honored prayer is dependent on what the pastor feels. If the pastor is going through and said the church must pray, then you start praying. Stop taking. 
The shop is closed. We don't care about the money. We are still doing stock trading. Yeah. There must come a time when your shop must close. Yeah. Hey. Amen. Hello? Amen. Your shop must close because we are too busy doing stock taking. Yeah. But you, you can't keep on thriving. Yeah. You are abnormal. If, if everything with you is just channel yeah. everything is straight. In the way is straight all the time. In the way is, hey, you are abnormal. There are times, but even I that I'm preaching, there are times where I have my eyes and my nose. Mm, amen. And you will see me when we have prayers. I must invite a guest speaker to come and pray. Because I'm at my law. I can't preach when I'm busy with stock taking. Okay. But because we're not, you are after the fame of the world. Okay. Watch this. Verse number 45. The Bible says, when they could not find him. What did they do? When they did what? They could not what? Which means, right now, it was never about relatives and friends. They were true to themselves. We are the parents, but we can't find him. Hello? You can't find him. Oh, madam. Come on, there were so true. Close your eyes and go to the back. How about that one? When Saul, being tall, you know, then Saul was going to Damascus. When he met Jesus and, 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 and he was beaten by lightning, he had to be blinded. To get to Damascus, he, he was not allowed to walk because he did not know. Hear me. The men that were with him. People have 
mastered the art of speaking in tongues. People have mastered the art, the art of Holy Ghost fields. <laughs> but we are doing all these things. He is not there. Come on. Even now, as I'm speaking, you, brother, the presence of Jesus is not quantified by how many cars you have. You can have all the money in the world, yet he's not there. You will still die like the rich man and go to hell and Lazarus dies with nothing and goes to heaven. My question to you before I close this afternoon, is he there? I never go ask a schoolmentalist. Who called no Jesla? No, check and kiss your Who called her now? When you're about to do wrong, which voice speaks? When are you keep on thriving in sin? In the excuse of grace. Oh Lord, Mike, your grace is sufficient. Rubbish! He's not there! That's why you can add appetite to the things of the world. Because if he's there, he's going to put your body under subjection. He's going to put your body under discipline. And your body does not search for the things of the world. You've got an appetite to be slipped on. Because he's not there. You've got an appetite to cheat your way up. Because he's not there. And I know this is not a famous gospel in the city. But I'm here to ask you, Catherine, you are known in Facebook and Twitter everywhere. But I'm asking, Justice, is he there? We are about to consecrate your baby. What heritage will you leave for this child? Because if it's not there, you've got nothing to show for it. Paul speaks to Timothy. I said, Timothy, the faith that is in you, I recognize it from your grandmother Louise. I also saw it. I also saw, I also saw it from your mother Eunice. I see it in you. It's a generational thing. When you're no more, makeup will, fa will finish. Hairstyles will finish. Cars will be taken by the banker. Everything will disappear. What heritage will you leave because Jesus is not there? Ah, oh, that, that pastor was a yearly pastor. The suits, they used to sit well, but Jesus does not sit well on him. Let them talk about you for the truth. Let them criticize you, but in the midst of criticism, you need to make sure that he is here. The Bible says the Holy Spirit testifies to my spirit that I am a child of God. I'm asking you, are you a child of God or a church goal? If he, if he 
is in your life, he will take care of you, my brother. Amen. You don't need to make any plans. He will take care of you. The God that I serve, he, the Bible says, he does not sleep or slumber. He will he said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I will be with you until the end. Until you take your last, your last breath, I will be with you. My time is gone. I'm left with 10 minutes, but I'm supposed to consecrate minutes. But before I close, I'm asking you. You look beautiful, John. You're a wife material. You're a potential husband. You tick the boxes. You appetize to everybody. If we give you time to speak, you get the attention of people. What do you do pass to your children's children? Is he with you? Are you sure? If you are not sure, I want you to stand up. Eyes closed. I don't want to embarrass anybody. If you are not sure of his presence, I want you to stand up. All eyes closed. If you are not sure of his presence, I'm not saying you're a sinner. If you are not sure of his presence now, I want you to stand up wherever you are. I'm going to pray for you. I want to initiate anybody's emotions. I'm going to wait for the next two seconds. If you are still seated, and you, you, when you are searching, he's not there. When everything has been taken away, you are left all by yourself. Is he there, my brother? Why don't you stand this up to me? Everybody that is stood up, please make your way to the front. All eyes closed.
we lost him. You know we lost him. You know what you need to fix. And I want you to pray for yourself. Say, Jesus, I need you right now. When you ask him to come, he's going to come into your life. And you people at the back, I want you to stretch forth your hands. Just stretch forth your right hand to the people in the front. And, and, and please just continue flowing. And, and, and I want us to release a prayer upon this people. Release a prayer upon this people. Release a prayer upon this people. You people, you need to pray for yourself. If there's specific things that need to be fixed, take them. Say, come unto me, all you. But I am related, and I will give you rest. Child of God, at the back there, can you pray for your sister? Pray for your brother. Somebody wants to find restoration. Restoration of Jesus. Jesus must be restored in your life. You love serving God. You love God. You love coming to church. But he's not there in you. He's not there in your life. He's not there in your your wife. He's not there in your marriage. I, I need the church pray. If you're not doing anything else, I need the church pray. I need the church pray. If you need to from your right and let your biological sister needs it, the biological sister depends on it. And life, his life depends on it. Jesus is not there. He must be restored this afternoon. He must be restored this afternoon. Can you pray for restoration of Jesus? Can you pray? You guys that are standing, that are standing here and kept yourself, open up your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, this is why things are not working. I need you here. Lord, I need you to appear. Lord, I cannot operate this boat minus you. I cannot pretend like you're here. I know you're not here. I need you. I need you. I need you. Touch me. Bless me. Break me. Lord, break me. Recreate me again. All I need. I've had people around me. I've had friends around me. All I need is you, God. I need you. Come on, church. Come on, church, for the next minute. Can we pray? Can I hear the church praying? Can I hear the church standing in again? Where are the leaders of the church? Where are the heads of the department of the church? Can you call for the Lord? The Lord must be restored. The Lord must be restored. Where are the worshippers? Lift up your voice, ushers. Lift up your voice, mama, for your child that is standing here. She's crying. She needs the Lord. The Lord must be restored in somebody's life. The Lord must be restored in somebody else. It's not about the touch of my hand upon your life. It's about his, his hand touching you. And he's here this afternoon. Allow him to touch you. Allow him to restore himself in your life. Shakata Lamayo. Lebro Hodorobo Sakata. Makanaba Shelter Lebayanda Ramaseka. Lama Nokoto. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to thy throne this afternoon. We dedicate my sisters and brothers that are standing in front here. Lord God Almighty, their hearts are open. Their bottles are unkept. I call for heaven. I call for the Trinity of heaven. May Jesus enter. Jesus enter that boat. Enter that boat of my sister. She's in the sea. She's in the ocean. She can die when you are there. Enter that boat of that man. And the world of that way situation, Lord God Almighty, I pray, oh Father, that oh God, as they stop and they take stock taking and they take stock of their lives, I pray for Jesus' restoration. I pray for Jesus' restoration. I pray for Jesus' presence in the evening, in the morning, in the midday, any circumstance of life, in any season. May Jesus be present. I pray for intimate relationship with God. I pray in the name of Jesus for my brother, my sister, that oh God, their relationship with you is not about the church, it's not about Sunday, but oh God, every day of their life, we restore the relationship, the broken relationship between you and men. We pray in the name of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus mend. May the blood of Jesus connect in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray. as all of us as a church to follow after this prayer and help the guys that are in front and say Father Father. come on let's speak together you guys in front and lift up your hands and speak up to me and say Father Father. in the name of Jesus Jesus, I have stopped pretending I have have come to you because you were never in me this afternoon I recommit my life to you I rededicate my life to you Come into my life. Be present in my life. In every decision making. In every walk that I take. Be present in my life. In the evening. In the afternoon. In the morning. In season and out of season. 
be present in my life. Father, I pray that, oh God, I will not continue without you. Every step of my way, you shall be present. Lead me in the name of Jesus. I accept you back into my life. We are going to become best friends from now going forward in the name of Jesus. And if you have received him, give him a shout of praise. Oh, come on, church. I say, if you have received him, he is present in your life. He is present in your life. The struggles that you have been going through, you will not struggle no more. He is present in your life. You don't need to feel it. All you need to do is just believe it. Say, Lord, thank you. from Jesus, they were led by Jesus himself. Because there had to be another way to be taken. And I pray that when you leave here, may God give you another way. May God give you another way that will make you, it does not matter how long it takes, but at at the end of the day you must reach your destination. When he's leading you. Welcome him back. Embrace him. He's a friend that sticks closer. Then, brother, when everybody leaves you, he's always present. Amen. When, when everybody is not calling, he's always calling. Amen. He's the, there's no need for you to be depressed when he's there. Mm-hmm. He is there for you, even when parents are not there. Mm-hmm. He's there for you. Yes. If I were you, I would embrace him. Before I take a decision, I ask God, should I eat this food? Yeah. Should I take this journey? Yeah. Should I enroll for this course? Should I apply for this job? He must always be the decision maker. Don't tell him what to do. He will tell you what to do. Amen. Open up your spirit. There's, from today, there's going to be a still, little, audible inner voice. Mm. It speaks once. Mm. Listen to the voice. Amen. It does not speak too many times. It is him speaking in your life. Amen. He says, do this. And the other voice always wants to challenge us. Ah. Don't open this. Open your spiritual ears. Amen. And receive the presence of God. In your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the man a praise.